Hey there, Dengas2 here. Today's video is about whether it's a good or bad idea to go and buy an old steel boat and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. If you look in the boating classifieds, you'll see lots of old steel boats, old work boats for sale and relatively cheap. They'll be sitting there floating with rust streaking down their hulls like tears on their cheeks saying, buy me, but should you? In order to answer this question, I bought myself a copy of Metal Boat Maintenance and Repair by Scott Fratcher, and I thought we'd just read through the whole thing. So here we go. Rescue a steel boat. Sweat equity goes a long way with steel boats. Sweat equity means you bought a boat cheap and you put in your labor to end up with a boat worth more than you paid for it. Get a boat cheap, do all the work yourself, all sweat equity. Actually, instead of reading the whole book, let's just find one to buy. Picked up the boat and we're heading up to Sydney now. Not the nicest day out, but it's the following sea, so it's relatively comfortable now we've made the turn. Anyway, I'll jump back in the wheelhouse now and uh, chat to you when we get back to the Hawkesbury. So here it is currently on Pedley's mooring in all its rusty glory. So overall it's about 30 foot, 9 metres. I'm taking it up to our local marina Fenwick's in two weeks so it's going to go up on the hard stand there and I'll start chipping and painting and anti-fouling and then we'll do the rest on the water. Well, welcome aboard. I'll tell you what I do know about the boat before we go and have a look around. So it's a nine metre vessel that was originally made out of steel, now it's made out of rust. Uh, it's called Julie 2 T00, so that's a good clue to the fact that we'll be doing a video on whether it's bad luck or not to change the name of a boat. It's got a 471 uh, Detroit diesel GM motor in it, which is uh, a two-stroke diesel, so I'll talk a bit about how they work down the track as well. What else do we need to know? Uh, I'm not sure of the exact design. It's an owner-built boat in about 1990, I believe. But I'd like to find out what plans, what design it was built from. So I'll have to do a bit of homework there as well. At the moment, I've got no idea. Anyway, that's the basic stats of the boat. So I'll take you for a look around. The wheelhouse on the boat is quite small. There's a little kitchen there, we'll show you in a second. But what that means is you end up with a larger deck, which is completely covered in rubbish at the moment. I'm in the process of cleaning everything up. A lot of people when they buy an old work boat like this will extend the accommodation and make more indoor space, you know, and sacrifice the outdoor space. I'm not going to do that though. I actually really like having the large deck space for diving and all sorts of other sort of activities. Uh, you know, it means indoors is a little bit crowded, particularly if you're staying overnight and the weather turns bad. But to me, it's a compromise I'm willing to make. On the deck, we've got the engine here and lazarette here. So there's quite a lot of storage under here and wheelhouse in here. Wheelhouse is pretty straightforward. Combined gear selector throttle, which is, you know, kind of nice and easy. Dials of which none of them work, but I have actually seen the taco working and I have seen, I think oil pressure and, and temperature working. So something's just happened. They've lost an earth or something. Uh, fuel gauge was never working. Voltmeter was working and switch panel. Came with a sonar, radar, and GPS. I think the GPS has lost its uh, card for the maps. It gives a good position, speed, direction, all that kind of stuff, but no charts. And a working VHF radio and a stereo. Here under the helm, there's a fuse panel. So I'll go through, nothing's labeled there. So I'll try and figure out what everything is start mapping all the electrics, start labelling it. Directly at your feet from the wheelhouse is a bit of accommodation down below. So the berth down below has got a little bit of storage at either end of the bunk. Sorry, bedding in the way. And a couple of lights. The lights, oddly, are only switchable from up in the wheelhouse. So you've got to turn them off then climb down the ladder in the dark. So I'll definitely rig a switch up here as well. Then here is the bulkhead going to the chain locker. There's also a little pivot telly, which is kind of cool. Watch a bit of telly in bed. These are the uh, Morse cables for the throttle and gear selector. 
and then these are the two hydraulic lines for the steering. The rest of the electrics look quite well done as well. A little bit of, you know, just looped up wires for ad hoc things afterwards, but I'm going to pull most of that out, clean it up as much as I can. This boat's much taller than Dave's yacht, so I've just got a line extending his mooring line at the moment. And then here's the chain locker for the anchor. No anchor winch or anything like that, so I'll probably look at adding something like that pretty soon. Might mean having to cut out a section of the bow here so it can run straight across. Don't know, I haven't really thought about it yet, but definitely gonna try and find something better than just throwing an anchor overboard for a boat this size. The other thing I do is I'm gonna cut some doors in these bulwarks. There's no doors at all, so nothing for the trance and nothing for the side. So it's actually quite a hard boat to get in and out of. So I'm definitely gonna just cut through, hinge one door, hinge another. I also had a plan at the transom to bring this out further and have some storage here and a flat section you can sit on rather than just the straight like that and that's a bit of a plan i think i'll do that sooner rather than later as well just get more storage make the storage put the door in came with a bit of a bait table some rod holders burly bucket that kind of stuff so it's a bit of a bonus looks like the boat used to have a dry exhaust going straight up Now it's got a wet exhaust going out through the transom. There's the hydraulic steering for it. There's a 4000 watt uh, inverter here. So this is a 24 volt, so it's a 24 volt system. So I'm definitely going to wire this up. It's never been wired before, but that'll be really handy. A couple of spare batteries. Might redo this paint here. There's uh, been doublers put on the side of this boat, welded on the side, which is why that paint's burnt. And uh, I don't know, you know, there's, they're a bit of a double-edged sword doubler, so we'll probably do a bit on that alone as well. Switch from the front once again, but there is lighting for both the lazarette and the engine room. So we'll go have a sticky beak in the engine room. It's under here. This table has been custom made to fit this space, so I'll just get rid of that. The engine, it's a General Motors diesel, and it's a, I think a 471. But what worries me a lot more is how much water's in the engine room all the time. I think the stern gland here is leaking, so it probably won't be a hard fix, but the bilge pump and the floats, which have both died. So in order to allow myself to sleep well tonight, I am gonna rush up to the workshop, grab a new float switch, grab a new bilge pump, and install that now. Boat's still floating, so that's a bonus. I'm gonna take it off the mooring now and just put it onto a pontoon, put it onto Arne's pontoon, so that you know I can just work on it for the next week or so. Mooring's a little bit tricky, motor starts all right, runs all right, but uh, stall's going into idle, so it makes berthing, you know, a little bit harder than it would be otherwise, but we'll fix that. There's that one knock of current, Stewie. Yep. So you can see here the leaks definitely coming from the stern gland. I'm going to tighten these three bolts a little bit, see if we can slow that leak, but it's something I'll look at in more detail once we're on the hard stand. The trick with these stern glands is if you tighten them too much, it gets too tight and it'll overheat. If it's not tight enough, you get a leak like this. I think I've managed to slow it a little bit, but I think the corrosion in here is stopping the flange coming in. I had the 19mm spanner on there with a bit of tubing on the end and I couldn't get it to turn much. I'm just going to keep a really close eye on the bilge pump until we get up on the hard stand and then we'll fix this properly. I think it's slowed a little bit but the bilge pump is what's going to save us until we get there. You know, it's kind of weird. When I bought a dirt cheap steel boat, I kind of thought it'd be perfect, but it's not looking like it is. So I guess big priorities for me are fixing the leak, which I think is the stern gland. So I'll do a bit of homework on that. Getting a bilge pump, maybe even too wired up correctly. I had a lot of trouble with the wiring yesterday. So, and I didn't have a multimeter, so I finally got one today. I'll have a look at that. But I want to get a couple of bilge pumps in there that are reasonably high capacity on good floats, which is just for peace of mind. Then after that, another major priority for me is fixing an idle problem. Motor starts okay, ran okay, came from Sydney up to the river, ran beautifully. 
doesn't blow smoke, you know, it was nice, but as soon as it goes to idle it stalls. I've got the service manuals for it and there's quite detailed instructions on setting up the governor to, you know, make sure your maximum revs aren't too high, that it idles at the right speed, all that kind of stuff. So I'll do a bit more homework on that and we'll make that a bit of a, you know, first job to do as well. So the boat's due to go up on the hard stand uh, on the 18th, so then I'll be getting the hull pressure wash, doing the anodes, anti-fouling it, get everything done below the waterline. If we need to take the prop shaft out and look at bearings or replacing a stern gland or anything, that's the time we'll do that. Then once it's back on the water, I can just start attacking all the rust and you know painting and that kind of stuff. Here on the back of the wheelhouse, you can see they've installed some sort of seagull toilet. So I think I'll get the pressure washer out and start cleaning this up. While I was working on the boat just then, a uh, mate of mine, Rick, pulled up in his boat which coincidentally actually has a similar motor. His is essentially the V8 version of this four-cylinder motor. So he was saying with this idle problem, he did have a bit of a play with the governor once, but you really kind of do have to get it right. It's easy to make it worse. And recommended simply just shortening this throttle cable. It's actually got a bit of slack in it. So I think if we just take the split pin out, pull the pin, wind the end, exactly the same with an outboard throttle, just keep a tiny bit of tension on it, at least that'll make the boat more drivable until we can get the problem sort of diagnosed properly. All right, so now uh, Rick's taken off again. I'm gonna get some tools out, pull this pin, and see if we can keep this idling. The throttle cables for this boat, you can see it's been uh, given a spray paint surface at some stage, but they're just identical to outboard cables. So split pin off, pin out, wind the uh, end in here a little bit and then we'll check the idle. It was also interesting to note that this locking nut here wasn't hard up against the clevis when I first opened the lid to the engine so not sure if it's been adjusted but I'm just going to wind it back. So we'll pull it on, put the pin back in, see what it's like and if it's good we'll just lock it off. All right got to put a brand new stainless split pin in here tighten our little lock nut and we're done. All right, well thanks for watching. Uh, I think this boat's gonna give us lots of opportunities to do some different videos. Obviously we've been focusing more on small boats in the past and we'll still do on the channel, but I really wanna sort of get this boat up to scratch and start looking at, um, you know, converting it to do some long distance cruising and spending a fair bit of time on board. So definitely plenty of cool stuff we can film with this boat in the future. In the short term though, I am going to push on with the little 13 foot skiff wooden boat build because I now have a reason to have that, which I didn't plan. I love it when a lack of plan comes together. But what I'm going to do is build that and have that as the tender to this boat. And then this boat's going to be the tender to the green machine. So that'll work nicely, I think. Also, just a reminder, we've got the channel meetup this Sunday, which is the 13th at Parsley Bay at 11 a.m. So if you're bringing your own boat, sort of make sure you're launched pretty early. We're ready to go about 11. I'll bring this boat as well, but I'll also bring the green machine. So if you don't have a boat, just sort of turn up at 11, you can jump on here, jump on the other people's boats, you know, whatever. All right, well, take care. I'll catch you next week, and I might even see you on Sunday. All right, bye.